So the name of the special segment today is going to be Dota, We Need to Talk. And uh, this is going to be about just kind of a basic guide of communicating within the game of Dota. And I think a lot of a lot of um, a lot of things that have to do with uh, communication and video games in general kind of apply to just communication in, in life and your everyday experiences. So I feel like you know I have some really good information here that will hopefully come in handy to help win games because um, that's that's what I enjoy doing. I feel like communication has definitely helped me win games and uh, you know become a more successful Dota player. So I think that when we think about the skills that are involved with being a successful Dota player, um, some things that may come to mind first are uh, mechanical mechanical skills. You know, maybe there's game sense or game awareness. Uh, and then hero and hero ability knowledge or just, you know, just kind of knowing how everything works together uh, within the game. But one thing that you may not think about right away is uh, the, the communication aspect of it. So um, that's something that's very important and that's definitely what, what, we'll, be, what we'll be talking about here today. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments sort of you know along the way, uh, definitely feel free to feel free to jump in and, and chime in if you, if you have any comments or feedback about anything that I'm saying or if you want to add any of your own experiences. Uh, I'd like to keep this kind of interactive because you know it may take a couple minutes. So if you guys have any um, anything to add by all means, you know feel free to do so. So the, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is why, you know, why do we need to communicate? And uh, in my opinion, and I think many people would, would agree, that um, Dota is a game about gathering and maintaining resources. Um, some of these resources are, of course, XP, gold, time, and even communication. Um, this is a team game, and uh, communication helps to rally your troops and play collectively. You know, every person playing individually doesn't necessarily win games. Um, so I think that, that uh, that's really key. You know, we need to work together. Uh, if I wanted to play a single player game, I, I wouldn't be playing Dota. And if you're not playing um, together, then it's like, what are you even doing? So um, I feel like that's, that's a, a big part of, um, of what we're trying to accomplish is just get the most out of this game as it is a multiplayer game. So that's, that's kind of why we communicate, um, you know, definitely team game. So yeah, and you guys, I, I, I just realized I don't have my alerts on screen for this. Um, I, I put this, this scene together. If you guys want to like unfollow and follow again, maybe, maybe you should do that. That might be cool. I think alerts might be on now. They might not. So just, just unfollow and follow like five times. <laughs> definitely in the other scene, if you don't see it, in this one, the other one, that will definitely work. Um, so that's why, you know, I think I think that we all we should all be on the same page that you know we know why uh, why we need to communicate. So the next step of this is going to be, well, what do we communicate? What do we need to say? Or what do we what information do we need to relay? Um, you know, what sort of information do you need to mention or even receive to be successful in the game? So I feel like this can be broken down into a couple different sections of, uh, of you know, what sort of information that we need to communicate. Um, the first one that I feel is, is kind of a big pool of, of information is map awareness information regarding to things such as hero positioning, uh, missing calls, or, you know, multiple heroes rotating. Um, definitely, you know, the more information that you can gather about where your team or even the other team is, is very, very viable. Um, exactly, Perseus is listing some really great suggestions right now. Um, so, you know, maybe like, you know, map awareness is, is a skill within its own. Like I, I force myself to kind of look at the mini map quite regularly. I don't know if you guys can tell when I'm looking at it, but I feel like I, you know, I hold down, I think it's alt or something that shows the little hero heads on there. Whenever I'm holding that down, that usually means that I'm actively looking at the mini-map, just because I like to know which hero is where. But I know that a lot of people don't 
you know, monitor the minimap probably as much as they do. So if somebody's like in a fight or they're they're farming kind of like mindlessly or something, you know, letting them know like, hey, there's a there's somebody walking in the jungle or you know, careful uh, Art Warden, you mean, there's somebody headed your way. Um, little things like that, like maybe they don't, maybe they missed it, or maybe they didn't see the mini map, or maybe they just never looked at the mini map. So hero positioning, missing calls, rotations, ganks, uh, I feel are, are very important to mention. Um, something along the, the same lines with map awareness, uh, runes, you know, if, if you see a rune that is up that, that you guys might, um, might need to be aware of, or if somebody else on the other team gets a rune, uh, that's something that I feel is, is very important information to have. Uh, Roshan timing, that's something that I, I kind of fail at. I always like, you know, we maybe we're like holding the Aegis and I'm like, hey guys, let's go Rosh. <laughs> so Roshan timing I think is important. Um, you know, if if you if it's been a while or like nobody's Rosh yet, like, you know, we should go Rosh or like Rosh is up, let's get it before the other team does. Um, so those are some map awareness. Uh, details that, that I think are very important to be communicated. So the the next thing is uh, another section of what do we communicate and the next thing is kind of what I consider coordination related and what I mean by this is you know as I mentioned earlier it's a team game and you can't accomplish certain goals within the game by yourself. So some of these coordination related goals uh, they might be pushing a tower uh, you might not be pushing. Maybe maybe you're behind, or maybe you need to split and farm. Uh, maybe you want to communicate a gank on somebody. Maybe you want to take a fight or get back. Like, how many of you guys have played a game where you know everybody has like items? You know, you're like kind of dancing around mid, or like about to fight, and then like somebody goes in, but then like nobody else goes, or like you know everybody goes in and then somebody backs out or you shouldn't have taken the fight at all but like nobody knows what's supposed to be happening because <laughs> like nobody said anything um, you know those are things that everybody needs to be on the same page and communicating these things really help out so you know there should be ideally you know maybe there's gonna be kind of like one voice of reason or one like team captain that is saying like you know are we fighting are we pushing? Are we are we not fighting? Are we behind? You know, we can't fight right now. Um, at least somebody needs to be mindful of these these sort of details. Uh, and you know, in my opinion, if anybody says back, like if anybody says back at all, maybe they saw something that somebody else didn't, or they they've seen a key item timing that um, you know you weren't aware of. Like if anybody says back, everybody should just get back. That's it. Like you're done. You're just you're not fighting. So coordination related, you know, it is a team game, definitely work together to accomplish uh, taking the objectives and ultimately the throne. I think that that's, that's obvious. Um, another thing about what we should communicate is uh, positive reinforcement or corrective measures. Um, and maybe corrective measures isn't the right way to say it, but I feel that it's important to uh, recognize key plays or performances uh, of your teammates um, because this game is stressful. Like it's it's an hour long or sometimes less, sometimes more of, you know, you're just, you're really focusing on the goals of farming and fighting and uh, just playing the game. So if somebody does something well, I think that it's, it's really good to recognize that. Say, hey, nice job with that gank or, you know, good job supporting that nice stun. Uh, what, whatever the case is, you know, don't forget about your supports either. You know, supports, um, supports do do their thing, and it, you know, just as valuable to the team as anybody else. So recognize key performances, especially if you're playing with like pubs or strangers. Like, just you know, just say, dude, good job. You know, nice work. And uh, I think it will go a long way to keep the keep the momentum going and keep everybody positive. Um, some other some other things that you can say are corrective measures or just like just suggestions like maybe maybe you play um, maybe you play a hero more than the person that that seems to be playing it or maybe they could use some help you know maybe you suggest like items for them or skills or techniques and this one I think there's a fine line with this one because you know people don't want to play Dota to be bossed around they, they want to play Dota to have fun so you know little tips here and there I think may help out if you see that they're doing something wrong or maybe they could do something better. I think that's worth mentioning as well.
And you guys are saying quite a bit in the chat. Um, a lot of that is, is planned for, so keep them coming. You know, if you have comments or suggestions, um, yeah, definitely, definitely keep them coming. And that's a good point about like, don't tell them specifically how to itemize because again, maybe they're trying something new or maybe they have a certain build in mind. But yeah, definitely remind them like, are they physical based? Are they magic heavy? You know, kind of like it's about, it's about like suggesting these things without basically saying exactly like, do this, do that, do this, because people will shut down. Like they will legit just shut down and we'll, we'll get to that as well. So, okay, so the next part is how, you know, how do we communicate this? We know why we need to communicate, we know what we need to communicate, but how do we do this? Um, so this is the most important part. Uh, how do we deliver the message so that it's received clearly, effectively, and efficiently? Um, so there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, there's a variety of different methods, even within the game. You have voice, uh, you have the ping, and you have the text. So these are like the three main ways to do the communication. You know, how do we communicate these things? So um, each of them are a little bit different. Each of them have pluses and minuses. I feel that the voice is the most ideal and most direct. Um, I think it's, it's probably easiest to use and also like multitask with. So I personally, uh, find great benefit in having, you know, voice communications during the game. So when we are using voice or even chat or any, any communication, you want to be succinct. Uh, you, you don't want to be long-winded or, you know, try not to sugarcoat anything. Um, and that kind of comes into a, a later point as well. But, you know, we don't have time to sit there and have a full conversation about something. You know, every single little mechanic, you know, it's be be succinct be specific um you know don't don't go into the, the finer details of like every single item build or why you know just keep it to the point so they receive the message easily um and, and again you know be specific if you're talking about pushing or ganking don't just say like push tower like which tower are we pushing like i know certain times like i'm in front of a tower and somebody says push and i'm like okay let's go we're pushing and then all of a sudden I'm ganked by like, you know, two or three heroes because they were talking about a tower on the other side of the map. So, you know, say like push mid, you know, let's let's gank this uh, shaman. Um, be, be specific, but also be to the point and succinct uh, with the details that, that you're communicating. Um, uh, I think what, what we mentioned about, you know, don't tell them specifically how to itemize. Uh, when you're offering suggestions, you know, be nice. It, it goes a long way, you know. Uh, don't be too pushy, you know, be nice. Um, I find that, uh, especially in my profession, we, we, we use this word, uh, a term called a, a compliment sandwich, <laughs> where you're like, you're trying to tell them something, right? And that's in the middle. But on either side of this, there's like the two buns that like sh that like soften the, the message in the middle. So it's a compliment sandwich. So you want to be like, hey, you know, really nice job with that stun, uh, but I don't think you should have died there. Maybe like some, maybe some warts would have helped to prevent that. But, you know, again, like nice stun, you know, good job farming. I think you're doing well. So sometimes, sometimes you can employ the compliment sandwich. Uh, sometimes that, that helps out because I've noticed like people will, people will just kind of shut down. If you'd be like, well, oh, why did you die? Why are you feeding? You shouldn't have been there. Like people, that's a good way to get muted or just shut somebody down. Like they won't, anything else you say, you could give them the best advice in the world after that, but they're not, they're not listening. So be nice, uh, you know, maybe employ the compliment sandwich method. Um, you know, some other examples, you know, like don't just ask like, where are the wards? I just died because there's no wards. You know, maybe you suggest like, I think it'd be great if we had some wards by runes uh, or the Roche pit. Maybe maybe some aggressive wards would help us get some ganks, um, things like that. And, you know, same thing goes for supports. Like, I see a lot of supports that just think like, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go just like cruise into the enemy jungle, just by myself. I'm like a CM, just going for a walk in the enemy jungle, you know, and they just get nuked, they just get destroyed. Like, it, it happens all the time. And it's like, don't ask like, what the hell are you doing down there? You're reported, why are you feeding? You know, just suggest maybe, 
I think we should wait until we gank, you know, or, or we're all pushing to get some wards. Let's group up, you know, let's group up and do it. Um, so I think those are some good ways to positively use uh, voice communications and how to and some things to kind of stay away from. Uh, again, positive reinforcement and leadership, I think, goes goes a long way. Uh, leadership definitely wins games. You know, if there's no voice of leadership, you're not a team. You know, somebody needs to be calling the shots like, call push, let's fight, let's get back. You know, somebody, somebody should usually assume this role. Um, you know, ideally, I think ideally somebody should be kind of figuring out uh, what, you know, what the pace of the game is, how it's going and what should be the next steps to winning. Um, a lot of times you'll you'll hear that supports actually do this very well, uh, and I, I do think that supports quite a challenging job to play because you know you have to be super aware to these things. You're often in charge of the vision. You know you're trying to keep an eye on your team and where the enemy team is. So oftentimes I think that supports are um, you know really greatly able to sort of affect this uh, the outcome of the communication through leadership. So definitely you know. If somebody says, you know, you lowly support just buy some damn wards, you know, maybe educate them and just tell them exactly how important you are because I think that the support role is definitely important and I think it could be a really great, uh, great position to, to fulfill this kind of leadership role. So listening is the other side of communicating. Obviously, you know, we're still talking about the how. Uh, but, you know, we've talked about how we can deliver this message. Now we also have to start talking about, you know, listening, uh, which is just as important as communicating the message. Um, and you'll, you'll often hear that there's a difference between hearing and listening. Uh, listening is an active skill that requires just as much practice as speaking, actually. Um, you know, my wife has is, is actually kind of gotten on me a few times about this, like, People are talking to me and I'm, I'm hearing what they're saying, but you know, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm thinking about something else. You know, there's a lot going on in my mind. I don't necessarily hear, you know, I don't, I don't listen to the, the message that's being communicated. Um, so we have to actively listen and pay attention to what's being communicated to us. Um, and with that, uh, you know, some people are not always mindful of the way that they communicate. You know, we just, we just got through how we can be successful with our communications, you know. Sometimes people are not always mindful, you know, maybe they're salty, sometimes they flame, you know, but sometimes they also do have good advice, even within this weird sort of like salty flaming attitude delivery method, sometimes that, sometimes it, there's still viable advice there. Um, so what I, what I recommend, and it's, it's really difficult to do this, but if you can challenge yourself to not let this game, you know, get to you, uh, you know, not take it personally, even in, in some of these salty flamers, you know, maybe they still have good advice. And especially if there's like, you know, if, if, the, if you're hearing the same message continually, like stop feeding or why are you feeding so much you suck or you're bad, like maybe it's just a positioning issue. So you have to sort of filter through some of this feedback if there's like some common ground to it, maybe there is actually good advice there, but you just have to kind of kind of filter through the saltiness or the flaming. You know, sometimes there's viable information even in that. Um, and again, you know, we've we've mentioned that people will shut down if they're they're not communicated to clearly or in such a way that they they receive effectively. You know, maybe you'll just get muted or maybe they just stop listening to you. So you have to be mindful of how you're communicating your information to your team as well. Um, some other challenges are, you know, like sometimes people just like they don't they don't even have their sound on or like they're listening to music. I have no I, have, I can't even count the amount of games that I've played that like, you know, I, I'm talking a lot or like everybody's talking like I've warned this guy like, hey, somebody's going to come gank you like you need to back. You're going to be ganked and then like repeatedly they just die. And then I'm like type to them like, dude, what you know, what's going on? Oh, I was listening to music or I, I don't have no sound music no sound so sometimes like voice maybe isn't the best way to do it so you know you have to kind of figure out you know what's going to be the best way to, to communicate to this team because sometimes like voice communication even though i think it's most ideal sometimes that's not going to work you know sometimes maybe they don't even speak your language or like you know again maybe they don't have sound on um so 
like there's other ways, there's other ways that you could do this. Uh, so some other ways that we could communicate in game are through the pings and also chat wheel and actually uh, text uh, typing. So you might have to gauge like, you know, um, what's going to work best for this team. So pings are another way uh, that actually can't be muted, which is kind of good and kind of bad. Sometimes I wish I could, could you know, mute pings, but you can't. So um, pings, you know, sort of do the same thing. If you see somebody on the minimap, ping them out. You know, if they're headed towards somebody, maybe like ping a trail towards them, you know, just so they know, or like ping the hero. You can also do like the X pings, which is usually like a no or a back or like don't go or like careful, you know, so like if you're doing the standard ping, you could ping out heroes, you can ping buildings to hit buildings. Oftentimes, like say we're pushing a tier one or a tier two, like this happens a lot at tier twos, like you're at the tier twos and you have a really good advantage, you like, you have some momentum and you're like, we're gonna win, we're just, we're pushing, you know? And then like, you get to the tier two and like everybody's going around the tower trying to like get kills and shit and like nobody's hitting the tower. And the longer you stay, you're gonna get creeps and, and tower aggro and it might not go as well as you had hoped. So ping the tower, you know, ping the barracks, like remind them like, we need to get these objectives if you really wanna win this game. So ping the objectives, you know, if you're ganking, ping a hero, uh, maybe type stun, you know, ping the hero. So pings do work. Um, I think it's a very uh, good, um, effective way of, um, of communicating if there's a language barrier. Um, and you guys, you guys are right on, right on point with the next point, uh, the next uh, comment is that the chat wheel is, you know, is translated to the native language of the person's, you know, game of the, the recipient playing, it's translated to their native language. So if I could just find, I'll try and find some that I have, um, you know, some, and this is, this is important guys, this is important. Make sure you have uh, stuff that communicates clearly, like on your chat wheel, like some of the, the default ones are really good. Push now and get back, always very good to have. Those are always good to have. I also like a missing. It's really easy, you know, hold down your chat wheel, boom, bang the missing out. If somebody's missing, just missing. I will alternate between using this button on the chat wheel as well as my voice. Sometimes maybe they're not paying attention to the text. Maybe they didn't hear me, you know, so I'll try and use both of these, especially if I'm mid and I know mid is like going for a gank or something, you, I'll ping this out as many times as I can. Um, so I feel that those are important. Push, back, missing. Um, I do have some flavor ones in there. You know, the relax, you're doing fine. I think that helps. Uh, well played. These are kind of like, like team encouragement uh, commands. I have the well played and the relax, you're doing fine. Just again, positive reinforcement. You know, if somebody does something right, well played, you know, boom, well played. Uh, tell them they did a good job. Uh, also with that, I do have an all chat flavor text of good game, well played. And I'll get to this towards the end. I also think this is sort of important as well. Uh, so I have a little bit of a flavor chat wheel in there. Um, and then also we need wards. Just, I don't use that a whole lot because I, I think that can come off the wrong way. I think I might actually need to update enemy returned and we need wards to something else. I don't find myself using these as much as I should. And I definitely think there's a lot of great benefits in having really effective uh, commands on your chat wheel. So that's um, also another uh, sort of alternate way of making sure that this communication is happening. So that's, uh, that's the how. So the last step, I have one more step and then I also have a, a little bonus section. So the last one is of course, when. Uh, so, you know, when do we, when do we, when do we, when do we talk? When do we communicate to the team? Um, you know, when, when do we do this? And the best, the best thing to do is just as much as you can all the way from the beginning, all the way to the end. You want to start communicating as soon as the game loads, uh, you know, you want to, even even in picking, I'm talking about picking, not even like in the game, 
So as soon as the game loads, I like to wait until at least we're in picking, so like anything that's communicated is still there. Uh, if you do it on the loading screen, it goes away. Um, so as soon as I'm in picking, I'll greet my teammates, just say, you know, hey, what's up? How's everybody doing? Um, this is good because I'll, hopefully I can see like if anybody replies, if they reply in English, if they say something negative or dirty to me in a different language, you know, I'm, I'm already gathering information about my team and my teammates. So if we're getting a response, you know, people are replying to you, uh, you can ask them about, you know, what sort of position or what roles do you guys want to play? You know, um, if you get if you get to that point, which is sometimes amazing, uh, if you, you kind of discuss positions, you know, take it a step further. Um, talk strategy, you know, what sort of draft are we going to do? Um, how can we execute this? They picked a bristle, you know, how are we going to get around bristle back? So you kind of take it step by step, you know, greet your teammates, establish at least some sort of positions or roles, like who's doing what. If you get that far, talk strategy. Uh, you can also mark the map uh, for your position. Oftentimes the only position that's marked is mid, um, but I think that's important as well. So you can get an idea of who's going where and hopefully, you know, who's doing what. Um, as soon as you're in the game, uh, greet them with your voice or again, greet them through text, whatever you can do. You know, some people don't have a mic or it doesn't work, that's fine. Use these other uh, other means of communication. So greet your teammates. Uh, I would use my voice, you know, again, ask them how they're doing, how has their day been? Um, ask them a question, you know, how has your day been? Prompting them to reply to you gets again another method of seeing who's going to actively communicate so maybe they'll reply in text maybe they'll reply through the mic this is great information to know because you can see okay i can work with this guy you know how can i strategize with this person that is communicating back to me and maybe establish you know some sort of a, a you know a, a team within a team or just you know a, a correspondence with them so that you can work together to carry out the objectives of the game um, Again, you know, so that's at the beginning. Talk throughout the game, even if it's just like what you're doing. You know, I'm going to farm jungle. I'm going to rotate to push. Let's gank. Let's push. Let's get back. Let's go do Roche. You know, keep this keep this line of communication open. Use all of the different methods. Use your voice. Use the text. Use the ping. You know, find out what works for them and, uh, and use it to your advantage. Um, you know, use it during, throughout the game. After the game finishes, you know, regardless of the win or the loss, you know, say GG. You know, I usually GG WP all chat most of the time. Um, you know, thank your team for the game. If, you know, you, you want to recognize any of this uh, positive performance that they had, um, you know, do that. If you guys lost, I, I try to just say like, hey, you know, whatever, good luck on your next game. You know, it was tough. Thanks for the match. Uh, better luck next time. You know, good luck on your next game. So, again, you're kind of seeing like, this ideally you want to be positive in these communications admittedly yeah i get i get salty like we all get salty sometimes but ideally on a good day you know try and keep the positivity there because i do think that the positivity helps lead your team to win i, I really do believe that um so you know just just say it was great win or loss you're gonna win games you're gonna lose games ggwp good game well played uh you know offer any closing tips like there's a lot of time at the end like hey you know I'm, you know I, I kind of could see where you're going with that build but maybe try this you know that's another good time to offer some suggestions if they're still there like sometimes you can see people just leave right away like if somebody's still there just you know talk to them for a minute so i think that that helps as well so that covers pretty much the the main bulk of what i wanted to discuss and there is a there's a little bit of a bonus segment um so if you guys, if you guys uh, have any additional comments or feedbacks before I wrap this up, um, I'm gonna go into this little, really quick, just like bonus segment, um, real quick. So add any comments in the chat below, and uh, I'll, I'll address them at the end of this. So there's two things that you can also do to help uh, kind of influence the outcome of the game, and one of them is hype your team up. You know, this is this is what we're doing to our team to get them to win. Just hype them up. Just get them fired up. Get them excited. You know, if they do something awesome, great job, dude. Good gank. You got them. You messed them up. You know, if the support's doing some awesome shit, you know, thanks for the wards. They're really helping. We just got mad kills. 
you know, just keep them pumped. Just keep, keep your team going. Like, especially in games that are like sort of back and forth or like, you know, it's anybody's game. You want to you want to keep them you want to keep them playing. Like it takes a lot of focus and attention to to win games. Um, you know, again, oftentimes an hour, sometimes longer, sometimes less. So I do think that keeping your team in the game and you know positive and excited is is great. I think that's really good. Um, making them laugh, yeah. Jokes are fun, <laughs> like. Yeah, like a joke, or like even if something happens in the game that's just like funny, just like maybe somebody messed up, and it's like, don't take it too seriously. Like, dude, what were you doing? But that was kind of funny. Like, I, I don't have an example of that, but sometimes it happens. You know, maybe like they feed in a funny way, or like they die to a to like a neutral camp or something. Like, whatever. Keep you know, just make it lighthearted. Like it's it's a game. It's meant to be fun. Uh, you know, uh, Perseus of the chat is saying, even if you lose, you can all leave the game happy. That's absolutely true. Like, so just hype them up. Like, you guys are doing this for an hour together, especially if they're communicating. Like, the best, the best games that I play and the games that I remember are games that, like, we worked together or, like, we all communicated very well. And, like, we worked together as a team. There's a lot of games that I, I could win that I'm completely silent, you know, but it's like, whatever, who cares? Like, the games that I remember. I'm playing with you guys on stream or I'm playing with a team that's like very interactive or like we had a really good combination of heroes that just like it just worked. So those are the games that I remember. So I think that's uh, important. Um, so the next the next part is, uh, well, like, how can we communicate to the opposite team? Like, what do we say to the opposite team to, to influence our game? Um, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach this with with some caution uh, because everybody has a different opinion on this. Um, but I think like getting in their head like without flaming, you know, like just a little positive flavor, like a little little jabs here and there, like really just kind of like you know get somebody to maybe tilt a little bit. Maybe that's a good word for it. Um, you know, you want to kind of like demoralize your your opponents without flaming them. Like this is a this is a part of the game. I'm not making this up. So, you know, I mentioned like nobody likes being spoken to like like they're being you know just completely tore up or destroyed. Like I've had people flame the shit out of me. Like maybe they find my stream, they will like personally attack me. I've had people say they hate my glasses. They make they want to punch me because of my glasses. Like those things kind of bother me. Like personal attacks bother me, but. There's, I think there's a fine tactic here. Exactly, there's a really good, there's a really good example of it um, in the chat. So like, some good, some good things to say are just like, if somebody messes up, or like a good one is like, Void, you know, like, Void, you really messed up that fight. Or like, you cost that fight, you know, you, you lost the game there with that ult. Or like, you know, you just know, like, there's some skill shot heroes that just like, mess the game up. Like, tell them, dude, you messed that up. <laughs> It will bother them so much. Like they're maybe they don't even use the chrono anymore. Like they're just like done. Like ah oh, okay, they they noticed. <laughs> or like punch hooks. Like punch hooks are really good at that too. Or like any ults, just say like nice ult. You know those are good examples. Like cool feed. You know if they die, like they had no chance in killing you. Like cool feed. You know cool feed them. Cool stun. You know or like if it's a support, like why'd you let your carry die? Or like if it's a really good carry. Like, you know one of the carries is, like, doing very well, and you're, like, kind of intimidated by them. If they mess up, like, especially say something to them, like, why are you letting your team die? Like, what, or, like, if they're gone, like, where were you on that fight? Like, what are you doing? You know, just, like, just tell them. Yeah, and if you get, if you get their, if you get the enemy team to believe that, like, the best player on their team is messing up, or, like, they don't know what they're doing, that's the best. That's, like, exactly what you want. So I feel like these are all, you know, very relevant tips. Like communication works for your team, but it can also help to, you know, just kind of screw up the other team. And I think it's in the game. Like it's it's a part of the game. If if somebody wants to mute somebody, you can mute them. Like it's in there. You have the option to communicate clearly to the other team. So I'll use it, you know, to my advantage. Uh, I, I try again. I try not to personally attack somebody unless sometimes 
you know, if they're very clearly being extremely rude, you know, I'll be slightly rude back to them, you know, like, sure, it's fair game, but I'm not coming out and like attacking somebody or like being clearly rude to them. Like, these are things I'm, I'm speaking about, you know, what happened in the game. Uh, you know, I'm just commenting so that they know that we know, like they messed something up. So uh, this is again why I have the GG chat wheel. It's my top left chat wheel. So just like if they feed or like we have a good fight, boom, chat wheel, good game. You know, tell them good game. It's translated to whatever language they feel to receive it. So I feel like this is, you know, something that people are gonna have different opinions on, but my belief is that as long as you're doing it, uh, you know, within reason, you're not flaming somebody or you're not, you know, you're not attacking them personally. I think it's fine. And you know, if, if they want to mute me or somebody, they have that ability to do so. Which, you know, just to add to this as well, if you're being, you know, flamed or just somebody's talking trash or like you just, maybe they're just not being productive, just mute them. I need to do this more. Uh, it, it really helps. Like there was a game the other night that I just I just muted this guy. Like I played one game with him, then I, I had him in this in the next game. The whole first game, I just had him. He was just going on about how bad everybody on the game was, on the team was. We lost that game. I queued up immediately after because that's what you do when you lose. You, you're salty and you just boom jump right in the game. So he's in the second game with me, and as soon as something happened, like. You know, he just went off like, oh my god, this guy's feeding, you're horrible, blah, 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 just talking trash. I muted him, and like, I could tell that throughout the whole game, he was talking trash about everybody else, because they were responding to him, and I didn't see what he was saying, but the team was responding to this guy. Like, dudes, just mute this guy. You know, I, I had him in the last game, he was completely toxic the whole game, and we lost. You know, I'd prefer to win this game. Because I, I did sometimes I'll cancel out of the game if I see it's like the same player, but I, I didn't notice it or something. So I'm like, dude, just mute this guy. You know, we're gonna win this, and we did. I, I unmuted him at the end. He was still going on at the end. I had him muted the whole majority of the game. But if you need to mute people, just mute them. It's it will help you out. So I, I think that um, you know a little bit of a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of strategic demoralizing of the other team is is fair game. So your opinions may differ. If you agree with that or disagree, you know definitely let me know and uh, leave leave a comment in, in the chat. So with that, guys, uh, that's the Dota we need to talk segment. I I hope you guys learned something uh, or just. You know, a lot of this I, I think is fairly common information, but sometimes it's good to just bring it up and, and talk about it. So I'm glad we had the sit down. You know, I'm glad we had the talk. Um, if you guys want to add anything to the to the discussion, definitely leave a comment or um, you know ask me any questions that you feel you may want to to ask, and uh, we'll do it. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna switch back to the uh, the game mode, and we'll we'll get back to playing some game and winning games.